Hey everyone, my name is Mike Aubrey. I'm one of the technical evangelists on the Fusion 360 team. And lately I've been getting a lot of questions asking if we can take data from 1, 2, 3D design and import it into Fusion 360. And the answer is yes, and that's what this tip is going to show you how to do. So uh, 1, 2, 3D is one of our sister products we have within the Autodesk um, designing product line. And it's really, really good at creating quick conceptual models with this really super intuitive interface that you can 3D print. And so for those of you that have used 1.3D, you know that there's really not a lot of exporting options out of it. You can save a native 1.2.3D X file format, and you can save an STL, which is really useful, of course, for 3D printing. But other than that, you really don't have a lot of other options. So if you want to get something into, into Fusion, um, you're, you're kind of stuck. So what this tip is going to do is show you how you can actually hack the 1.2.3D file format and get it to export as a SAT, which is a different, we call them a, a BREP solid, that you can pull into Fusion and get some use out of it. So if you guys have tried to actually pull in the STL format, that's something we can get into Fusion as well, but uh, this is the default STL that was downloaded actually off of the 1.2.3D website pulled on there, and you can see it's, it's a uh, it, yeah, it does look like the shape, and this would be fine for a quick uh, you know, print on a MakerBot, but that's not something we're going to be able to do a whole lot with if we wanted to make an edit in Fusion. Uh, first off, because the detailing obviously is not quite as crisp as we'd like, and then second, the STL file format actually doesn't allow direct editing yet within Fusion. So let's go ahead and we will we'll, we'll change out the 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 one two three D file format and get it into Fusion. So to, in order to make that happen, you're going to want to save a copy onto your local computer. So actually, if we call this like Robo Awesome, that's a good one. Robo Awesome uh, number two, I guess, because I practiced this once before. Uh, go ahead and, and save that out. And then what you'll need to do is go back. To, so I save this on the desktop. You're going to need to convert it to a zip file because that's actually going to separate a couple of the different uh, referencing files. At, um, so that you can just get it down to just this core uh, file that you need to convert to a SAT. So go ahead and, t and change your Robo Awesome file format and convert it to a zip file. And you can see that it's got you know a, a couple of different products, uh, not products, a couple of different files now. And then go ahead and find this SMT file that's within it and drag that back to your desktop. So there's my guy. And go ahead and convert that to a SAT. All you got to do is just change the name. And this file, this little guy right here, actually I'll rename him back to Robo Awesome, will be what we pull into Fusion. So uh, go back to Fusion, open your data panel if you haven't already, and hit the Upload button. This Upload button will bring in your SAT. So here, go find, there's our, where's our Robo Awesome? Robo Awesome and hit the upload button. And so this will just start, this will translate in the background and be converted to a Fusion file, which is a .f3d. So depending on the complexity of your model, it'll import in about one or two minutes. Once it does so, look over in your data panel and it'll appear just as one of the icons. Double click on that icon and there's your, there it is. There is your model. You can compare it to what you had in 123d and that's, yeah, that's what we wanted. So now that we've got it in, let's take a look at what we can do. You've got this wonderful foundation of, of uh, that you've already created. Let's add on to that with some of the modeling capabilities of Fusion. So the the default environment that you're in, because this was a base solid, it's a it's a there's no feature history involved with this. It's just a SAT file. Is we put you in our environment where we don't have the timeline. So there's still sculpting, modeling, patching, all that's good stuff that you have in Fusion, but there's no history. Um, no problem. Just go ahead and you can just start making changes. So like press pull will give this guy a little bit of a neck. Uh, one of the advantages of being in the in the direct modeling environment is you have a really flexible move command. So actually, if I hit the hold on the shift key, choose these two surfaces, I can hit this move button, and you can see really easily I'm able to kind of take and move this face around. I can go and you kind of orient him and get him in a different spot. Maybe make him you know just make him you know, a little bit angry. Kind of get him in the place here. Looks pretty cool. Like oh yeah, gnarly guy. Maybe we'll take uh, this guy as well, this side, and do the same thing. No big deal. Get him oriented. Yeah. Some other stuff we can do here is actually if you're if you're not feeling those eyes, or actually maybe we want to make them into this like totally awesome pirate, you can uh, you can actually even delete whole faces right here, and it actually will do its best to heal uh, whatever the the prism the, the the polygons are that are around it. So here, yeah, we got this guy eliminated. Actually, I'll put him back. I liked it before, and we've got yeah, it's just some basic changes there. 
Uh, some other stuff you can do in this environment is if you want to go and maybe uh, maybe we'll smooth off some of these edges. You know, you can add in fillets or chamfers. Uh, one of the th and if you ever want to get rid of them, you can just go back and make the change. One of the disadvantages here is you're making these changes. Remember, it's not keeping a history. So if that's something that you want to do as you make these changes, uh, consider trying this. Copy the bodies, the body in this case is just one, or bodies depending on the part that you imported. Uh, open them up and say copy. And then what we'll do is we're going to paste it into a new file that has a, a timeline. So something that is going to allow us to build something out parametrically. We're just going to paste it into a base feature. And so what the base feature environment is, is it's just like the environment we had. But when we exit out of it, we can start building a set of history to changes that come afterwards. So to, to get your, your piece in there, you need to have the just a folder. This is just a placekeeping thing that, uh, for you. Create a body, and then you'll get this folder bodies that you can then right click and say paste. And there will be your... Your, your robot in this new uh, parametric modeling space. So I'm going to take this guy, put him here. That looks good. And then I'll delete the other one. That was just a placeholder to get that folder to appear. And now we can we can still do the things we had before because we're in this base feature environment where we can create without a feature history attached to it. So I can go move things around and you know, do the, those types of adjustments. But when we're ready to exit out of this base feature environment, we're now in the fusion modeling environment. And changes that you make now will be captured in the timeline. So like, for instance, if I go here and I add a fillet to this top, or maybe I go and I actually, we want to make this, this guy even longer. If I say extrude, we'll make him give him a super long giraffe neck. You can see now down here, we have these two different features. So I can go, see this guy is now captured. And if we roll it back even further, you can see that gets rid of the fillet. We can also go and we can edit these things after the fact. So if I go and right click on this guy, say edit, remember you can go and change this thing. We'll make it even more dramatic. We'll make it 15. Like, oh boy, that's, we're just getting super crazy there. So you can, yeah, you, you can uh, add changes, add and make changes to these things. and. Uh, and, uh, and be on your way modeling. So here I'll make a couple of final things. I'll just kind of slightly round off these these teeth. And uh, just for funsies, actually, let's shell this guy too. Because we can do, it's not just about just kind of simple edits. Actually, you can do pretty dramatic things as well. So here we'll shell this side. And I think I can even shell this side too, yeah. So we'll remove both sides and see if there's, the Tin Man really does have no brain. Get this guy out. And then uh, we'll, re we'll uh, re replace those uh, those uh, colors that didn't quite come over. So actually we'll go and uh, add just a paint. So we'll go and maybe add, um, let's take, I liked the, um, maybe a dark gray, I think. Yeah, that's looking good. And then for the face, I remember this guy is red. And so we'll keep this that kind of angry look for this little guy. And then I think that yellow flake was looking pretty cool on the outside here. Yeah, that looks nice. So just, a, you know, just kind of quick drag and drop in a couple of, a couple of materials and then we'll, uh, make this look really super awesome. We'll just finish this out by making a quick rendering. And there's our rendering. So let's quick recap what we did to get this into Fusion 360. To start off with, you're going to want to save a local copy of what you've modeled in 123D Design as a .123DDX file. Take that file and change the extension to be a .zip zip file. From that, go into that zip file and extract the .smt file change that to a .sat file. Then upload that sat file to Fusion 360. So with those couple steps, you'll be taking advantage of stuff that you've already modeled up in 123D and doing even more awesome stuff using Fusion 360. So I hope that was helpful for all of you and have a great time designing. Take care.